Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of 5-Minute Gaming News, the show that may or may not be five minutes. So, quick story. Last night, as I often do, I went online to check out G4, see what's going on over there. I like to watch some of their content, because admittedly, G4 was a huge part of my adolescence, right? Growing up, realizing that, oh my god, video games could be a career was pretty impactful, as I'm sure you can see. So seeing its return last year was pretty cool, especially now that a lot of people I consider friends, some of them very good ones, were on G4. That was great. I, of course I'm going to support them. I want to see what they're up to, because I love my friends. But in watching for some time this new iteration of G4, I noticed something that's just been bugging me, and I really wanted to talk about it today. Watching all this new content over time, I noticed a weird disconnect happening between the shows. Like, each one was developing a different voice with no real cohesion across the channel, and that stands out to me because normally that is fine if you're doing TV or YouTube or whatever. But do you remember back to the whole summer house, the whole we're a family, we're in this together thing, streaming together, working together, just like friends, hanging out, producing content. It seemed like there was a vision going forward, they were all on the same page, there was a cohesion to it all. Their big comeback on Twitch was a single channel. All that content was then going to be clipped up and put on YouTube or on TV. And I thought, what a great opportunity for all those people, that's pretty unique. They're doing G4 with all the old classics, but at any given time, any of these hosts or talent could be on any of these shows. It was fun. But very quickly, it became clear that the shows were being divided. Talent divvied up, and every show quickly started to have this it's its own thing vibe. Which is fine, like I said, if it was on TV, it wouldn't even be noticed between commercials or episodes of Cops. But it also changes the entire feel of the stream portion of G4. Because no matter what, for some time, it has been very obvious that their plan initially was to bring on as many popular streamers as they could, feature them, and get some of their viewers to watch, and hopefully those viewers would stay. It's not that crazy of a plan. It's actually very smart. It's what people do all the time. It is straight up the reason for collaborations. You're hoping that people will come watch the collaboration, and then people will stay. It's it's a very sound tactic. But it did feel pretty low on the creativity side, and there seemed to be a lack of innovation. They were just kind of falling back on the old show formats, and anything that was kind of new was a one-off or like a goofy, we're having like a theme party kind of thing. And let me be clear on this. I may be in the minority. However, I tune in to see the nerdy review shows or the goofy segments where they kind of cover a pop culture thing, that's what I'm there for. I don't want to watch a bunch of popular streamers show up, do a popular streamer thing, and then leave. I can go see that on their own channels. Why do I need to come to G4 to witness that? And then, like I said, all that stuff on Twitch is chopped up, the international chopped up sign, chopped up, and then put on YouTube and on TV. But the disconnect between all the shows is all the more clear when you watch it on YouTube. Instead of this little family cohesively growing together, it became multiple little shows all growing differently at different rates. One thing would be a funny Attack of the Show goof, one thing would be an X-Play review, one thing would be a stream that they had done, or another would be a D&D &D show, and that is a problem. One that I personally have faced for the last 10 plus years. Different shows draw a wide range of people into a channel's audience, but they only care about the show they like, and it is absolute hell on analytics. My video views, just like G4, were, and to some extent still are, all over the place. People who like Scary Game Squad, people who like this show, people who want Let's Plays, people who want Fan Friday or Multiplayer Mayhem or whatever, and while, yeah, there is crossover, for the most part, the vast majority of viewers want to watch the one thing they love, and that is it. And when you upload every day, and people get hit in the inbox with all these other shows they don't care about, they are more likely to leave. Or worse, not watch them, and then YouTube is like, oh, these people don't like the channel anymore, and then they stop sending you the videos altogether for the channel, and then you miss out on the things that you do like. And overall, everything suffers. Which is why, to this day, and every single day in this office, I get to answer wonderful messages that are like, where's SGS? I only like SGS, this sucks. Or, on the other side, I don't get any of your videos anymore, what's going on? It's cause you stopped watching, and, and 
That's why they just decide to stop sending them to you. And as someone who's experienced that with YouTube for quite some time, I thought the idea of G4 putting all their content and all their shows on one channel was crazy, but it could work because they were growing that family and everyone could be on everything and you never knew when your favorite was gonna show up and have something to say on X-Play or then end up doing a weird gag on Attack of the Show. But as each show segmented, it clearly became the same problem I have. And so coming back around again, when I went on G4 last night, I saw it had become X-Play and all the non X-Play content was gone. At first I was very confused, but then I searched for videos like Attack of the Show and discovered they were there, but now on an Attack of the Show channel. It's its own Attack of the Show channel. Except all the videos were backdated like they had been there the entire time. I honestly thought I was going insane. Needless to say, my mind was not lost. It turns out that they actually did purposefully split up all this stuff and they made an announcement on Twitter, but a lot of people like me, when it first happened, were confused because, you know, a lot of people don't see the Twitter feed for G4 or see their press releases or their website stuff. And so a lot of people, like I said, were, what, what happened? I had the exact same feeling, but I understand why they did it. And it's honestly something YouTube keeps pestering me to do. They're like, just split up all your stuff, except that's so much more work, so much more work. It's the reason why Cox Clips exists, for example, so I can put all the Let's Play stuff there. That's something I did for you. So yeah, I understand why this change was made. The thing I don't understand, and something that I saw a lot of while deep diving into what was going on with G4 last night, was some insane toxicity. All the discussions I saw on Twitter about G4 were just so angry. And here's the thing, it wasn't a one side being troll angry thing, it was like everyone was angry. And so of course, I had to figure out what was going on, and that leads us to this next part. So a quick bit of story time here. A few months back, G4 got a lot of press over one of its hosts, Frosk, speaking for a lot of women about how they felt when men on the internet treat them like shit. Essentially that women don't exist in gaming to be oogled by men. It got a lot of love, but also got a lot of hate from the usual suspects. And afterwards, much like all things on the internet, the Go Frosk crowd moved on with their lives and the We Hate Frosk crowd stuck around. Or I guess didn't because a lot of them threatened to unsub from the Twitch and YouTube channels. And the harassment of channel hosts and people on G4 continued anyway. And the best way I can describe where I found myself in that deep dive of the internet last night was The Last Jedi and Rise of Skywalker. You're a nerd, you're on the internet, you know that when The Last Jedi came out, it was divisive. And as a result, rather than continue the story and just suck up that some fans wouldn't be coming back, Disney straight up decided to give in and try to give these fans what they wanted. And so we got got Rise of Skywalker, a film that no one I know liked and honestly is without a doubt the worst of the Star Wars movies. And that's where I found myself last night with this realization that at least in this one corner of the internet, G4 was kind of Rise of Skywalker. Because a week ago, a, a very popular live stream show on G4 featured streamer and avid bikini wearer Amaranth. Spoiler, it's tons of clips of her in a bikini in a ball pit. And that one single moment, all it did was bring up all the feelings that were had when Frosk made the original statement and just gave fodder to those on the internet looking to make a thing out of this. Except this time, like Last Jedi into Rise of Skywalker, no one appeared to be happy. There were people upset about Frost's statement and G4 support of it seemingly thrown away. And those trying to get Frost to comment and start some drama. No one seemed happy. Everyone seemed like they were looking for a fight. And so of course I had to go and watch the full stream on Twitch. And it appears they were just doing what they always do. Invite a big name on, get them to bring views. And in this case, it was Amaranth. And then she appeared to just be a guest on everything they were doing. And some shows she was sitting there having a conversation with the host, in other shows she was doing like a goofy bit, and of course in one of them she was just in a bikini in a ball pit. All of those are fine. Ball pit amaranth and interview amaranth, it's all fine, but it does highlight the disconnect between what's going on, between all the different shows that seem like they're all run different ways, and how this family they were trying to do is gone. And again, it seems like there's eight leaders and not one person at the top sort of running everything, making sure there's a through line in the shows. Because again, they're doing it on Twitch. This isn't TV stuff. This is Twitch to TV, right? 
So now you have the problem of one show saying women are not sex objects to be oogled by guys on the internet and another show where a woman is literally a sex object to be oogled by guys on the internet. And let me be clear, I love women. I love boobs. And I have zero problem if any woman wants to show me them. But it does come off as being kind of hypocritical to your audience. And now you have everyone on the internet on either side pissed. One side pissed for your host and another side trying to piss off the host. And now that all the content is spread across multiple YouTube channels, it does kind of feel like they're trying to have it both ways. You know what I mean? Over here, it's gonna be wacky dude time with boobies. And over here is gonna be a more progressive show for a more progressive audience. And in the meantime, we'll just let the fans fight it out on Twitter. And honestly, the thing that concerns me is, what does that do to talent? The people that are there every day, who are caught in the middle of all this stuff, all this drama constantly being pushed their way. I know that I would be over it very quickly, because really, a lot of it is just trying to get the hosts angry so that they'll react to something, so that people can make more videos and make more money, and be like, G4 is declining and it's the worst. And that's why it feels like even more so, there is no leader at the top. Someone who's controlling everything, trying to like get stuff in order, trying to get everyone on the same page to just shut this shit down. All of this feels like a symptom of whoever was in charge deciding at some point that they didn't really need to lead and that people would just come back to G4 because it's G4. Except now there are a million little G4s on the internet and they aren't the top dog anymore. And without any leadership, I don't think they will be again. Anyway, that is it for today's episode. Thank you so much for all the support and the comments and the likes and sharing like you always do. It means the world to me. Also, everyone over on patreon.com slash jessecox, you mean the world to me too. Especially Fizz, Nada Masood, and Margus Kirsch. Curse? One of those two. You're great. Thank you so much. That's it for 5-Minute Gaming News. I'll see you tomorrow.